All right, lecture 10. This week we are going to start a completely new app called Emoji Art. I'm going to show you what it looks like in just a second here. And that's going to allow us to, okay, of course, like we always do, learn new things. For example, this week we're going to learn about drag and drop, how to do that, gestures, that's the main thing. Also, multiple MVVMs. So far, our app only had one MVVM, but a real app has many MVVMs, so we're going to have an app that has another MVVM. And eventually, we'll get to talking a little bit more about colors and images and how they're represented, and multi-threading and error handling, very important things. And we're all going to be able to do this on the framework of this emoji art thing. So let us go and do that. Here is what emoji art looks like. It is, as you can imagine, making art out of emojis. And I've already created one here. It's I, this cow and these bees down here and the rocket ship up there. Those are emojis. And we create our art by going down here. You can see that I have um, a whole bunch of emojis that I can scroll around and I can pick them up and move out of there. So let's put this one here. Maybe cow wants to look out because here comes a car coming down the road. And what we're going to do this week is learn to do that drag and drop that I just did and also drag and drop of the background. You see this nice countryside image right there. We're going to do that background. And we're also going to do multi-touch. Specifically here, I'm going to be able to do things like zooming in. Like if I zoom way in on this one, really far in, you can see that there's a ghost in the window right there, emoji that I put in there. And we're also going to want to be able to pan around. See, I'm zooming in and panning. So that's what we're going to be doing uh, in the first lecture today is building this basic uh, UI that you see right here. And you're going to take it the next step. Your assignment is going to be to pick the car up and be able to move it. In other words, have this edit the selection, uh, create and edit a selection. So let's go back to Xcode. We're going to create a new project. This app that we're going to build, we're actually going to have this working on the Mac, in addition to on our iOS devices. But we're going to use the mechanism to work on the Mac called Design for iPad because our app looks pretty good with an iPad-like UI on the Mac. So when we choose it here, we're not going to choose multi-platform. You see where it says multi-platform in the corner there? That's if you want to build an app that truly builds a native Mac app and a native iOS app. And I don't think I'm going to get to that this quarter, but uh, we are still going to be able to have a Mac app using this design for iPad mechanism. So we're still going to pick iOS app, just like we did before. This is called emoji art and same old stuff here that we had before you want to have same organization identifier all that stuff and you're going to want to put this into your uh, repository except that that's really not what you're going to do because as i said when you get your assignment five assignment it's going to have the code from this week in it if you wanted to follow along here as, as you you know be, maybe go watch this on video and you're following along you would probably just create it in some other place and then when you clone your assignment five, you'll get a nice copy to work with from there. So I'm gonna put mine right here in my developer directory. Just gonna make this big, close some stuff here, make more room for my huge fonts. Oh, we don't even need this at first. Uh, one thing you notice is when you first create it, it's showing me an iPhone here. As you saw when I showed you the app, it's an iPad app, not an iPhone app. We're going to make our app work on iPhone too, but we're first going to target it for iPad because in authoring mode, when you're making these emoji works of art, you really would love to have an iPad, plenty of room to maneuver. You, you're going to be able to do it on iPhone, but eh, it's pretty crowded in there. Uh, so how do I make my little preview window here show me an iPad? I just pick an iPad as the target here. So if I pick an iPad, as the place I'm going to run my simulator, then the preview is going to match that up. Now, I'm going to say right off the bat, as I'm doing demos here, I'm not going to keep this open because an iPad is an unfortunate aspect ratio. It makes it, if I was going to show it to you, it makes it quite wide. So I'll be opening and closing the preview, or I'll just be clicking run the simulator and we'll fly over and see it in the simulator, etc. It's not quite as fun as it was when we had the code there and it was just everything I changed was instantly showing you that. Let's start 
by doing our model, which we always like to do, understanding what it is we're building. Maybe we won't get the model right, right off the bat, but we have a pretty good idea. So let's go over here, file, new file, Swift file, because it's a model. And I'm gonna call my model emoji art. And emoji art structure is gonna be that background and all the emojis and where they are and what size they are, because they can all be different sizes. That's it, that's the entirety of my model so far. Maybe we'll add some more stuff later, but that is the entirety of it. So totally UI independent here. It's not gonna you know, know how I'm gonna display these things on screen. So it's a struct called emoji art, and it has this bar background. And I'm gonna store my background there's actually multiple ways we could think about storing our background. Like we could store it as an image. We haven't really talked about how to do that. We only know about image as a view for displaying images like system images we've seen. But uh, another way we could do it besides just having kind of the raw data of an image is to store a URL here. And this URL, it's just gonna be HTTP slash slash something out there where the image is on the internet. Now that's gonna create an interesting problem for our app, which is that sometimes the internet is slow and I wanna draw the background of my beautiful artwork. So ah, how am I gonna do that? So we're gonna see that's gonna create some nice problems for us to learn how to solve. And then of course, I'm gonna have my emojis and we'll just make this an array of some other struct called emoji. Let's go down here and have a substruct emoji. And this substruct emoji, it's going to have the string that represents the emoji. And then we need its position. I'm going to have its position be yet another little struct. And then we need the size, which I'm going to make it an int. And notice I'm not using like CG float or anything in here because this is UI independent. So I can't have CG float. So that's why I'm storing as an int. You could say I might, I should be storing as a double. But actually, I'm going to have the coordinate system for my uh, emoji art be kind of set by my background. So most backgrounds, if they have any kind of resolution, are going to be at least a few hundred wide by a few hundred high, probably a few thousand wide. Thousand high. So having the size of the emojis kind of be in our integer boundary should be good enough. At least that's the design decision I'm making here. Might be wrong, but that's what I'm deciding. And the position is just an X and Y. So let's say var X, var Y, int. I, I made these be vars because I could imagine that obviously while I'm using my document, I'm resizing those emojis or moving them around. In fact, that's your assignment is to be able to do that. So they're vars, so they can be edited. And currently my emojis right here is public access bar that you can go change all you want. There's nothing that stops you from changing all the positions and sizes or anything. The only thing I don't let you change is the actual emoji on an emoji has to stay. If it's a ghost, it's always a ghost. It doesn't change to being something else. And that's really it. That's my model, simple model. We're not really focused too much here on all the MVVM stuff because you've already done MVVM to the nines, but I thought it would be valuable to see another MVVM here. In fact, like I said, we're gonna do two MVVMs. So let's go on now and look at our view model. What does our view model look like for this? All right, file, new file, select file. And I'm gonna call this emoji art document. And that might seem like an interesting name for my view model. But the reason I'm calling it emoji art document is that we eventually want our emoji art thing to have multiple windows on our Mac, for example, multiple windows or on an iPad side by side documents that we're working on. We want to have multiple emoji arts in our app. We don't want to just have like we had memorized one game. <laughs> That's all there is, is this one game. We don't want to have one emoji art. Now we're going to have that for a while until we put some support for documents in there. But I'm thinking ahead a little bit and I'm gonna call this an emoji art document. There it is. Of course, it's our view model. So it's Swift UI, it's part of the UI. And it's a class emoji art document. And of course it's an observable object. It's like all of our view models are. We can always start off with that. We always know that our view models are classes and that they do observable object. Well, I didn't start with that with Memorize because you didn't know those things, but now that you know what they are, of course, we start with them at the start. 
And of course, we're also gonna start with what is our model? Well, it is of course an emoji art. And I'll have it set up to be just a blank emoji art. We didn't have any inits in our model, our emoji art model, so we get the free one. And we didn't have any uninitialized bars, right? If we go back here to our emoji art, this is an optional, so it starts out nil, right? We get the free equals nil, nil here. And then this one we said is an empty array of emojis. So there's nothing we have to initialize. So we can just have an, that initialized right there. You probably got the idea that I'm kind of a fan of protective view models, view models that protect their model against invasion. So I am going to do full protect mode here and say that this is a private bar. Only I'm going to allow you to access it. So that means I have to provide things like an emojis uh, computed property here, public property, that lets you get at these emojis. So I'm going to return my emoji arts emojis. And I, of course, am going to be doing a lot with emojis here. So I don't want this error, cannot find type emoji in scope. So I'm going to go really quickly right up to the top and say type alias emoji to be emoji art dot emoji. And I would argue you could almost put this type alias at the global level. Unlike in our memorize where we had a card and, and we might have other card games, the word card is so generic. In this case, capital E emoji, that type, it's almost certainly going to mean the emoji that's inside of an emoji art. So I could, if you made the argument to me to put that globally so I don't have to put it in all my, you know, my UI structs and all this, I, I'd, I'd probably be with you on that. I'd probably go with that. But for now, we'll leave it namespaced inside of our view model here. And I probably also need the background, so I'll have bar background here, which is a URL. And we'll return our emoji art background. And what about setting these values? So I'm definitely going to, of course, have intent. So I'm going to mark it here, intent functions. And for example, func set background, of course, we want to be able to set our background um, to a URL. And we'll just say emoji art dot background equals that URL. And we're gonna have more intent functions. I mean, obviously we're gonna need intent functions to move the emojis around, right? And to resize them because you're gonna be doing your multi-touch to do that. And we'll add those later. We don't have to add everything up front. But you get the idea, question. What's the difference between the boxes and the question is, why am I doing this? Why am I making emoji art private and then having this public thing as well? The answer is I'm protecting my emoji art. It also gives me an opportunity. I'm protecting it from someone who calls the wrong things on it. Like maybe they add emojis and when you add emoji, you have to do something. And in fact, we're going to see that that's true. And I don't want some view to do that. So I'm providing functions that I'm telling to the view, here's how you can access this model only in these ways, only these public bars, only these public intent functions. That is the only way you can access this model. I'm sure you're just like, well, that's so simple. Why would you ever do that? And this is the problem with a demo is, of course, I'm making it simple. We can't stand here for hours typing more and more code in, making complicated models. But again, I'm just trying to show you what it looks like to do this, a more complicated model, like if it was a SQL database, Obviously, you want to protect it. You don't want people making SQL calls <laughs> into your SQL database. Your view model wants to make the calls for you, right? So, hope does that make more sense? If it was a more complicated model, would it make more sense? Yeah. Okay. So we got this. That's our view model for now. We got the idea about this. Let's go do our view. So I'm going to do file new file. This isn't, is a Swift UI view, so I want the one in the corner here. This is an emoji art document view. It's a view of an emoji art document. You give it an emoji art document, it draws it. And no matter what it is, it draws it. That's its job. That's what this view does. Create, there it is. And our emoji art document view, what does it have in it? Well, if we go back and look at it over here, it's kind of got the image. And then it's got this little scrolling emojis thing down here, right? That's the only two pieces we have so far of this. So let's put those pieces in here, make it just a V stack of them, V stack. And at the top, we're gonna put, I'm gonna put color.yellow. 
as the top because we don't have our image yet. So imagine that the background is this color dot yellow thing and then scrolling emojis I'm going to put down here. So scrolling emojis is going to be some view I'm going to create that's going to have that little scrolling emojis thing down there. It's a view, obviously, it has a bar body, which is some view. And we have to put some scrolling emojis down there. Now, one thing some of you might be saying is, wait, VStack, this app over here, it looks like, like a ZStack, actually, right? Because you see the image is going behind. It's not stacked on top of it, it actually goes behind. Well, actually, this is VStacked. And right now, I'm just not clipping to that space. So this image is big and it's spilling outside the bounds. Now, of course, our color dot yellow that I have as a placeholder, it's not gonna spill outside its bounds, but this image is. And this is an interesting thing about SwiftUI is that views can spill outside. And sometimes you wanna allow that and sometimes you don't. And in this app, sometimes we're going to and sometimes we're not, but we're not doing it for this background. We're letting it spill out but it's still a V stack. We all still want the scrolling emojis at the bottom and you know the other thing generally at the top. So let's do our scrolling emojis here, the body of our scrolling emojis. I'm gonna do it conceptually first and then we'll fill it in with some reality. Conceptually, it's a scroll view and specifically it's a horizontal scroll view. Now we didn't see this when we did the other scroll view because we didn't have an argument because vertical is like the default, I guess. And we specifically want this to scroll horizontally, these emojis down at the bottom. And it's a horizontal stack, right? An H stack, We've got a four each. We're gonna go over some number of emojis down there. We'll talk about that. I'm gonna use this ID backslash self, which means this emojis, whatever these emojis are, they better be unique because I'm gonna use themselves as their identifiers. So this has to be, this can't have any repeat emojis in there. That's gonna confuse the four each, but that's okay. We can, we can make that happen. And then of course, emoji in like we do with all four eaches. And then I'm just gonna have a text of the emoji. Now we're not quite there because what is this emojis? Well, this emojis, it could be a string of emojis, but then this emoji right here would be what? A character. Because if you for each over a string, you get the characters. I don't quite want that. I actually want this to be a string so I can pass it to text. Text doesn't take a character, it takes a string. So I want this to be an array of strings. Each string is one emoji. That's what I, I wanna do. So let's go up here and make a var for that. Emojis is an array of string. And those each string is an emoji. Now the only problem with that is it's real convenient to have a list of emojis as a string, right? So instead of having to say open square bracket, quote, one emoji, end quote, comma, quote, and that's a pain in the neck. It'd be nicer if I could just do something like this. Let's go up here and say, I have one here scrolling emojis, right? I could just say private, let my emojis equal a string with a whole bunch of emojis in it. That would be really nice. So how am I gonna pass this string into this that takes an array? I'm just gonna make an init. So I've got an init right here. I just hit tab and it gave me a default, the default init. But instead of just taking the emojis as an array of string, I'm gonna take it as a string and then I'm gonna convert it to an array of strings. So the first thing I'm gonna do is unique it. Uniqued, great little var that takes a string and removes all duplicates. Unfortunately, it doesn't exist. There's no such thing. I wish there was, there's not. So I actually wrote that myself. And this is a classic case when you're coding and you're like, you want a function and it's just not in the Swift library, you can write it yourself. And how do you add it? Extensions, right? That's what we use extension for. So I did it, I have it over here. Let's go and drag it in. And I have it on my desktop, I think, somewhere, let's go over here. Here it is, extensions.swift. So I'm gonna pick it up, drag it in here drop it in. When you drag and drop something in, you almost always want that destination copy items if needed, because otherwise it's gonna essentially be like a, a link, a symbolic link to it. Ugh. Be careful that it's a link to a place that you know what's going on over there that it's not changing out from under you, whatever. 
course, when you copy it in, it makes a copy of it. So it's freezing at the time you copied it in, but that's what we want here. Let's take a quick look at this extensions file that I just dragged in. You can see down here, extension to string, I've added this thing unique. It's not a very good implementation of it. It's not very efficient or anything, but it just reduces that string into a new string where it's checking to make sure that the thing doesn't already exist, right? If not so far that I've created contains the thing, then just keep appending it, right? So I'm, it's really inefficient. It would be, it's fine for small strings. You wouldn't want to do it on really large strings, be very inefficient, uh, but it's good enough. Now notice I have some other things in the extension. We're going to see this. I've extended CG rec to have some things, uh, CG size. I've actually created a type alias for CG size called CG offset. Um, I have some transitions here. I even have a button, a little kind of special button that I made. We'll look at that in a bit. And, you know, as I add more extensions and maybe more little utility views, I'm just going to throw them in here over time. Let's go back here. Now we have this unique. It's actually a thing. Now I want to convert this from a string to an array of strings. Let me do that with map. So map takes a collection of things. It might be an array, it might be a string. A string is a collection of characters, right? So it's a collection. And it maps them and creates a new array where each of the things in the other collection gets a function run on it. And then it ends up in the new one. So what is the function I'm gonna run on it? I'm gonna convert it to a string. So $0 here is a character because I'm doing map on a string. Emojis.unique is a string. String of a character makes a string with that character in it. This makes sense, right? Everyone's cool with this? Let me show you another way to do this that you're gonna see in code and you're gonna be like, what the heck is going on there? Now you're gonna know. I'm gonna say map and map takes an argument. What's the argument to map? In this case, the argument to this map is a function that takes a character and returns a string. That's what we want to return a string, right? So here's a function that takes a character and returns a string, string.init. So when you see type.init, this means call that constructor with this argument. When I say string.init here, I'm passing a function that takes a character and returns a string. In fact, this function will also take other things and return a string because you can pass a number to the string constructor and a double and it'll turn it into a string. That's what this means when you see dot init. It means call the constructor with this thing. Notice I don't, I'm not doing curly braces here. I'm just passing this function, the string.init function because the argument to map is a function. So I'm passing it a function. String.init is a function. It's the constructing function. And it uses type inference to pick the right one, the one that takes a character in this case. That makes it nice. And also I probably don't even need to say emojis. It's pretty clear scrolling emojis takes emojis. So I'll do this external trick that we've done before. Get rid of that. Let's just pass this in here. Scrolling emojis, emojis. All right, let's see. Oh, well, there it is. And it's kind of hard to see, but you see my scrolling emojis right there? Well, it's hard to see because these are very small. Let's make those emojis bigger so we can see them a little better. Eh, how are we gonna do that? Well, probably one of the best ways would be just to set the font. And I can set the font of this whole thing up here. See where it says scrolling emojis? That's that scrolling emojis view down there. What if I just said dot font? use the system font of a certain size. We'll call it my palette emoji size or something like that. Turn this into a nice little private let palette emoji size to CG float. We'll make it, I don't know, 40 points or something like that. Yeah, that's better. What else can we do to make this look better? One thing I don't like, you see the ghost right there? Boy, he's jammed right up against the edge. Let's give a little padding here. Let's make a little padding. I'm just gonna say dot padding. Now the interesting thing about the padding is I don't really want this much padding. There's no need to have this much space all around. I really just want this padding on the sides. So I'm just gonna pass an argument to padding here, dot horizontal. And that only does the horizontal padding. The other thing is, look, there's a little bit of space between my image here, my background image, 
and the emojis, I don't even really need that. And, and I know eventually it's gonna spill over anyway, but I want these emojis kind of as tight as I can. And what about the space down below? This space down below is actually a safe area because on the iPad, you can swipe up from the bottom there. Everyone had an iPad or seen an iPad. You can swipe up from the bottom and get to the app switcher basically. So let's at least fix this by having spacing zero between the thing on the top so that we get down as tight as we can down here. The other thing I notice, and I'm kind of surprised by it, but do you see a little scroll indicator? See that scroll indicator? It's hard to see it. It's kind of a little gray bar that appears when I'm scrolling. Definitely don't want that. So I'm going to take that out. I didn't think that that would appear there. I'm kind of surprised by it, but I'm just going to say scroll indicator is hidden because I don't want it in any case. And I'm putting it here, but I could also put it up here. The place it should hide it. So let's go try that. Yeah, see there it's not showing that little thing. Let's work on this color yellow. Let's turn this into the body of our document, the actual emoji art document in here. I'm going to make that be in a separate little var. So I'm going to var called document body and then go down here and say private var document body which is some view and what do i want to put in my body so i'm again i'm going to do this kind of conceptually and then we'll just chase down all the errors that are showing because reality is not the same as conceptual and our emoji our document is basically a z stack with all the emojis and the background, right? The background in the back of the Z stack and then all the emojis are stacked up on top of it. It's all one big Z stack though. So let's make a Z stack. And the thing in the very back, I'm gonna actually put white background in the back behind everything, even behind my image. If you scroll around to the point where the background image is not even showing, I want it to be white in the spaces that, where there's no background image, right? In other words, if I go over here and I zoom way in, right? Say so I zoom way in here. See, I want that to be white over on the sides. Zoom in even more here. See what I mean by I want a big white square? This area here, I want it to be white. I'm putting that in the very back of my Z stack. Then the next thing is I'm gonna put my image image goes here. We don't know how to do that yet, but we will in a second. And then I'm just gonna put my emojis. So I have a for each with all of my documents emojis and each for each emoji in there, I'm gonna create a text with the emojis string. And then I want the font. It'd be nice if I actually had like emoji.font. And then I'm gonna use this new view modifier we haven't seen before called position, which is the emojis position. Now, again, I'm conceptual here. This is going to create all kinds of errors and we're going to chase these all down, but this is kind of conceptually what I want. If I could write the code this way, I'd love it as a view. Remember, I always want my view code to be simple and conceptual and semantically meaningful. I'll put the complexity somewhere else, like in my view model or somewhere else. So let's chase these down. What's the first thing? Cannot find document in scope. Why did I type document.emojis there? Because that's my view model. The document is my view model, but I never put my view model as a var up here. So let's do that. At sign observed object var. My document is an emoji art document. Just like we did with memorize and all that stuff. We obviously need the view model that is driving our document. Now, how are we going to set that value? Again, we could make it an at sign state object and create it here, but we definitely don't want that. Think ahead to what I was talking about where I'm gonna have multiple documents in my app, like on the Mac or whatever. Well, each of them is just gonna be an OOG document view and I'm gonna be passing different documents to it as I open them in the file system or wherever I get them from. So I definitely don't wanna have the state object and have it be stuck in here. Plus, eventually we're gonna be saving these documents on disk and all that stuff. That we don't want that inside our view, okay? Views aren't about saving things, they're about displaying things. So we definitely wanna pass it in. Now, down here in our preview, we need to do one here. So down here, we might just say, as we are wont to do, just create one on the fly because every single time I click on this 
thing, it's going to redo it anyway. So it's fine if that view model is getting constantly uh, re recreated. We really don't care there. But the real key, the real important one is over in our app. So if we go to our Moji Art app over here, here's where we want to do the exact same thing we did before, state object var, we'll call this our default document because we're only a single document app right now, but we're going to have multiple documents. And uh, it will set it equal to an Emoji Art document. And then we're not going to do content view in our app. We're going to do an Emoji Art document view. We're going to pass it this default document. And you see why I'm calling it default document? Because right now it's a single document app. It only has our one document that we're working on. We don't even know how to save a document, let alone open multiple, but eventually we're going to. And when we can start opening multiple, we're not going to even have this at sign state object here. Instead, the documents are going to start coming out of files, right? File system or whatever. And that's a ways down the road, five or six lectures in, in the future, but we, we want to be ready to do that someday. But for now, we'll just have this one default document we keep in the state object at the top level. That's the same thing we did in Memorize, so nothing new here. Let's go back to our view, see what other kind of errors we got going here. Referencing initializer init for each requires that emoji conforms to identifiable, right? Of course. We have a for each there. The things that we for each over have to be identifiable. We go all the way back to our model over here and make this emoji art emoji, this thing, be identifiable. And we know that means that we have to add a var here that's ID. And what type should we do? Well, since this is a, a document essentially with a bunch of emojis in it, I'm gonna use an int as my type and I'm just, every time I add an emoji, I'm gonna increment the number. So in my document, I'm gonna keep one number, which is the next number to use. I'll call that, it's a private thing here. I'll call it unique emoji ID, and we'll start it out at zero. And then every time I add an emoji, I'm gonna increment that by one and make that be the identifier. Now, how am I going to set this? Well, I'm going to have to add a function to add an emoji to my document that does this thing of incrementing that. So let's create such a thing. Uh, the emoji that you wanna add and what position you want it at. Give an emoji dot position here and the size you want it to be. And then I'm gonna say unique emoji ID plus equals one, go to the next one. And then I'm gonna say emojis dot append a new emoji. So let's say emoji and I'll put this on multiple lines so you can see it a little better here. And the arguments are the string to use for the emoji. That's what you just would passed into us. The position also passed to us. The size also passed to us. And the ID, which is this unique emoji ID. Now we get the error that we're hopefully really used to because we are trying to modify ourselves, both adding emoji and also incrementing our unique ID. So we need to say that this is a mutating func. And that way, Swift will know that if you add an emoji, it has to copy on write the entire emoji document, which is fine. That's what we want here. Now this is not really gonna work 100%. Why is that? Because var emojis up there is public var. Anyone could go along, create their own emoji with any ID they want and put it into our array of emojis. And maybe it has the same ID as something we already put in. So somehow we have to make it so the only way to add an emoji is by calling this function. This is the only function that knows how to correctly put an emoji in there. So how are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna go up here and say private set. Only we can set an emojis. Now, this is gonna have some ramifications. It's gonna make this work. So now the only way you can add emoji is with this function. But what if you wanted to resize an emoji? or move an emoji. Now this guy, emoji art, is gonna to have to provide functions for that. And in your assignment five, you're gonna to need to do that because I'm gonna ask you to make emojis resizable and movable. So you're gonna to have to add functions here to do that and in your view model for that matter. And speaking of the view model, I have emo add emoji here, but my view model, since it protects my model, it needs an add emoji as well. So. Actually, make it a little easier on myself by starting with this same function. It's just an intent. So let's go down here. 
Now we're a class, so we don't need mutating. I might do some nice things for my view, like maybe I'll take a CG float here because my view is more likely to want to send me a CG float instead of an int. And my job as a view model is to make it easy on my view. This is a small thing to make it easier on there. And then I'm just going to call that same function over there, emoji art .add emoji, which I'm allowed to do because this emoji art is private to me, but that means I can write it. And so here's the emoji and the position and the size. All right, let's go back, keep looking over here. Build, got rid of our identifiable problem. It's great, what's the next thing? Value of type emoji art on emoji has no member font. I tried to call font on an emoji art dot emoji. Now, some of you I know are saying, oh, that's illegal because a font, that's a UI thing. And emo an emoji is a model thing. There's no way I can't have the font be in the model. And that's true. Okay. Not all things are true, but it is not true that you can't have a font bar there because we can go and add an extension to emoji art dot emoji that adds a var font, which is of type font, and it returns a font dot system font of size cg float value of the size from the emoji. And you might look at this and say, whoa, this got to be illegal somehow here. Isn't this illegal? And it is absolutely not illegal. And this code is not part of our model. This code is part of our view in this case, because that's where I put it in the view. However, I'm not even going to put it in the view. This is the kind of thing that would be really nice to put in my view model. Because my view model's job is to help my view make life easier. So why wouldn't my view model add a nice little extension to the emoji here to add this nice little function that the view wants? It makes the view's code look so pretty over here, right? So it's perfectly legal for it to add that over there. We're almost there. Now we've got conflicting arguments to content and it doesn't know the types. It's very confused about this position. So what is position? Position is a view modifier we haven't seen so far. It's the view modifier that like HStack uses to position the views in a little horizontal stack. Or Aspect vGrid uses it by having lazy vGrid use it to say, put the things in columns and rows. So position is how you position something inside your view space. And here we wanna obviously position these emojis at the right place in our Z stack. We don't want them all stack up on in the center or something like that. We want them to be positioned where they're supposed to be. The problem is that emoji.position is an int, right? And that has to be a CG point, floating point point that we have to pass to it. But it's even worse than that because we haven't even really talked about what coordinate system this position is in. Everything that X and Y is an offset from the middle. Cartesian kind of coordinates, right? That you're used to with up being up. And the background image is centered on the middle. So if you move around in the document or scale it up or anything, like if you scale things up, everything just scales together. Everything's scaling out of the middle. Now that is a problem over in my view because where is the middle of my view? You know, I, I, it's like, I need to find my middle. Well, the only way I can find my middle is to get the coordinate system of my view and figure out where the middle point of it is because that middle point is where I'm gonna put things that are at zero, zero, for example, in my Mojart document and all everything relative to that. So how do I get my coordinate system? in a view? Well, geometry reader, of course. So I have my geometry reader proxy and we'll go down here. And we saw how geometry reader can tell us the size, but it can also tell us the entire coordinate system of our view. We definitely need that here. So I have a geometry reader. Now I know the coordinate system. So it'd be really cool here if I had emoji.position in that geometry, right? That would be awesome to have a function called in geometry that was in emoji.position. 
Just like we have the var font that we added, we can add a function too. So let's go over and do that. I'm gonna do that in my view model here. So I'm gonna add this one, this extension to emoji art dot emoji dot position. And this is gonna be a function, it's called in, and it takes a geometry proxy and it returns a CG point, which is exactly what my view wants. My view wants a CG point that represents that emoji art position in that geometry. Now, what's this error? Keyword in cannot be used here. In is that keyword we use in a for loop, right, right? For each, we say in the closure, it's the thing that separates the arguments from the thing. So we can't use in there, but actually we can. If you go over here and click the fix, you'll see what the fix is, which is to put back quotes around it. If you want to use a reserved keyword as the name of your thing, you can. You just put back quotes there, single backwards quotes. It's like escaping it out of there so it doesn't interpret that. And then on the calling side, you just say in. You don't have to use any quotes on that side. That's kind of cool. How do we find the center of our geometry here? Because that's really what we need to do to be able to do anything. I'm going to say let center equal our geometry frame in the local coordinate system. Now we can get our frame in the global coordinate system of our entire device, but we want it in the local coordinate system of just our view. And I want the center of that. Now center, nice little var, gives you the center of a CG rect. This geometry frame in local gives you a CG rect, the rectangle, which is your entire coordinate system of your view. Unfortunately, center does not exist. So that's another one I added via my extensions. Go over here to my extensions. You'll see right here, CG rect, I added the bar center. I also put a way to create a rectangle given its center and the size, just for my own convenience. But you might say, hey, you know, why do you really need to do that? Well, it makes this code look really clean right here, because otherwise I'm going to have to do all this stuff that I'm doing over here, like, you know, mid X, mid Y, all that. This is just not as clean as just saying the center, please. So now I've got the center of my geometry's frame, right? My view's rectangle. And now I just need to offset by whatever the emoji's position is from the center. So let us just return a CG point where the X value is that center plus a CG float of the X value. And remember, the, I'm adding this as an extension to emoji art dot emoji dot position. So that struct has X and Y. Remember that? Let's go look at it. Here it is, right here. See, it has X and Y. And since I'm extending it, I can use X right here. Unfortunately, it's an int, so I have to CG float eyes it because I'm returning a CG point here. But let's do that. And the same thing here, the Y is center dot Y plus CG float that Y except what? Upside down coordinate system. All right, the ordinance system is upside down. So that's really not plus, it's actually minus. Because I told you that I wanted my emoji arts coordinate system to be Cartesian, upright. It's just easier for me to think about it, <laughs> to do it that way. And again, this is part of the job of the view model. Interpret this wacky or normal <laughs> Cartesian-like coordinate system for the view, which has this upside down coordinate system. Everybody cool with that? So now if we go back here to our view. Build. Build succeeded. So this thing that I started out, I said was just like pseudo code. I actually can type it that way. Type it in exactly like that because my view model helping me out with a lot of little extra functions there. Believe it or not, this is enough to actually look at our document. Let's go put a couple of emojis. We can't drag and drop any emojis in from our thing, but so let's drop a couple in. I'm just gonna go over to my view model and let's add an init. And inside the init, I'm just gonna add a couple of these things. So emoji art, add emoji, we'll add emoji of some kind. And, oh, here's another cool thing here. I could say emoji art dot emoji dot position sub X, whatever. But this is kind of a lot of things to type. So I can just say dot init here. Saying dot init allows type inference to go and say, well, what am I expecting there? Oh yeah, I'm expecting an emoji art dot position. 
So I'll just use that as the initializer to use. So now I can do the X and Y. So let's put one of them at minus 200, minus 150. The size, let's pick 200. We'll make them nice and big because we're demo mode here. And then let's do another one. So we have a couple of them. We'll put the other one at the other side, the other side of our Cartesian coordinates here. This way we can double check that our upside downness and all that stuff is working. We'll make this one smaller so we can tell which one it is. And what kind of emojis we want to use here? Let's just pick some random emojis. How about bicycle? That looks a good one. And for the other one, flame. All right, let's take a look at this. I'm going to actually run this. Look at it, kind of bigger mode here. Look at that. Zero, zero is the middle. This was what, minus 250, minus 150? That sounds right. I'm going minus, I'm going minus, and this one was plus, plus. So I'm going plus, plus from the middle. And if I went back here, Maybe we change this one to plus 150. Let's see if that works. So we change the bicycle to be plus 150. It should be up above, and it is. Oh, good. This is nice. Everything is working well here. Now let's get our background image going. We've got the emojis going there. Let's show a background image. That turns out to be incredibly easy to do. We've got our Z stack over here that has all of our. Uh, emojis, and I'm just going to replace this image goes here with a view called, you'd think we'd want to put image here. Right? You, know, you know, we've had image system name, and I told you you can do image named, and other thing like that. but actually we don't want the view called image. We want a view called async image that takes a URL. In this case, our documents background URL. An async image, really cool little view. It puts up a gray box while it goes out and fetches that image. And when the image comes back, it shows it to you asynchronously. Now we're gonna write our own async image in this class because I wanna teach you how to write your own asynchronous code. But for now, let's go see this one in action. There it is, gray box. How am I gonna set it? How do I set that URL? We're gonna do that with drag and drop. We're just going to a website somewhere, and then we're going to drag and drop. One other thing I want to do about this image is, uh, where is this image? Right now, it's just kind of centered in our coordinate system. But that's not really what I want. I want it centered in the emoji arts coordinate system. So I'm going to say dot position here, and I'm going to put its position being emoji dot position, basically x of zero, y of zero in this geometry. Okay, we need our type alias up here, of course. Type alias emoji equals emoji art dot emoji. See, I'm already right, regretting I didn't make that global to type it twice. But I'm just taking a, the position zero, zero in our geometry and putting the uh, image there. Position, you've probably already figured this out, is always positioning the center of the view. When you say position of view here, it puts the center of the view there, which is exactly what we want in this case. This code, by the way, is fine, emoji.position x0, y0 in geometry, but really what would be cool if I could do something like position.0 in geometry, okay? Emoji dot position dot zero in geometry. And you'll see, uh, the reason I'm putting this here as something that would be nice is you're gonna see this a lot with CG rec dot zero, CG size dot zero, CG point dot zero. And I just wanna show you how that's done. It's pretty obvious really. If I go over to my emoji art, I can just add a static let here in my position called zero and it equals self x zero, y zero. I'm gonna show you two things here. One is that you can have these static lets like zero on your structs, if it makes sense to have a zero. But also I'm doing this, I'm calling self. This is myself. Capital S self means the type your code is in. And you'll see, I'm only putting it there because you'll see it sometime. We could easily say emoji.position. In fact, we could just say here position, right? That would be perfectly fine. That is the type here, but it's capital S self is 
the same thing there. So just in case you ever see that. All right, build succeeded. Now we can go on to doing our little drag and drop. And I'll talk about it in slides and then we'll, we'll go do it. So let's go to the slides. How does drag and drop work? You are just going to make sure that the thing you want to drag or drop implements the protocol transferable. Makes sense, right? It's going to transfer when you drag it and drop it somewhere, it's going to transfer it. So it has to implement this thing called transferable. And all the basic structs, strings and ints and datas, like if you're dragging image data and yes, URL, they all implement transferable. So we can easily drag and drop all of those things. Now there's two sides of being drag and drop. There's being a dragger and a dropper. A dragger is a view that can let you pick it up and drag it around. And a dropper is something that lets you drop something, a transferable on you and you can do something about it. Let's talk about the dragger first. Being a drag initiator is just the view modifier draggable. If you put the view modifier draggable on any view, then you can pick that view up and start dragging it around, even into other apps. And all the draggable view modifier wants to know is, what is the transferable that I'm going to transfer if someone drops you somewhere? So here, if I had a text that was showing some emoji string in it, and I said dot draggable, I would give it the emoji so that when someone picked this text up, and dropped it somewhere, it would be dropping the emoji, the string. The argument to draggable is a transferable. And it could be any transferable, URL, string, whatever. And that's it, that's all that's required. The system automatically deals with picking the view up and you know, let you drag the view around. It, it's actually amazingly simple. Now what about the other side, the dropping? To be droppy, you just need to add the view modifier drop destination to yourself. That tells the system, I am a drop destination for this kind of transferable. And so the code looks something like this. Here I have some rectangle. This rectangle is a drop destination for strings. And you can see that the rectangle, it strokes its edge with a, either a five or one line width, depending on whether it's highlighted. It's a drop destination here. And notice when you say drop destination, you say for what kind of transferable? Am I a drop destination for strings or for ints or URLs? What are you trying to drop on me? And then you provide a closure here and it gives you an array of the things that were dropped on you. Why is this an array? Because in Swift UI, you can drag and drop multiple things at once. You do it with two fingers. You pick the thing up with one finger and then you click tap on some other things and it adds it to what you're dragging. So like our little emojis at the bottom, we could pick up one and then just start tapping on the other ones and it would be adding them to it. So now I'm dragging multiple things around. So it gives you an array of those things and the point at which it was dropped in your local coordinate system, of course. There's also another closure that's optional that you can put on there called is targeted. And that is just telling you someone is dragging on top of you. They haven't dropped you yet, but they're just dragging over you. So do you want to highlight yourself? So here in my rectangle, when I'm targeted, you see it sets the highlight to true. When I'm being dragged over, now that's why my rectangle has five thickness border. And that's only when it's being dragged over, not dropped, just dragged over. Just kind of giving feedback to the user. Ah, oh, look, you might drop. Now, you don't need that very much because when you drag over something that can drop, by your finger, there's a little plus sign. You're gonna see it in the demo, a little green plus. And that tells you, oh, I can drop here. Okay, so that's important feedback. And usually that's good enough, but you can do it if you want. Only one drop destination view modifier on any given view. Now you can have different drop destinations on, other, on different views, but on one view, you can only have one. And this is a major restriction for us in Emoji Arch because we wanna drag our background in and we wanna drag the emojis in. One is a URL, the other one's a string. I can't have one drop destination for URLs and one for string on the same view, and yet they're being dropped into exactly the same spot. So I'm gonna show you how we can work around that, but that is somewhat of a restriction here. It's kind of nice that Emoji Art has that restriction because I can show you how to get around it. So let's go back to the demo and do this. Let's do the dropping of the URL background first. This is really very, very easy. Where do we want to drop this thing? We essentially want to drop it on top of our Z stack that is our document here. So dot drop destination. And what are we dropping? URLs. Notice that this URL.self, when you say dot self lowercase to a type, 
That means the type itself. So here I'm saying, I'm a drop destination for things that are of type URL. I'm passing the type URL actually to drop destination as an argument here so it knows what kind of thing we're looking for. Then there's the closure, takes an array of the URLs and the location that we dropped it. We don't really care about that for the background, but we are gonna care obviously for emojis. And then inside here, we have to process it. This closure that you give it has to return whether the drop was successful. Because someone might drop on top of you and you look at it and they're like, whoa, I can't take that. And then you have to say no, so that the thing will fly back to where it came from. So I'm gonna return uh, some function I'm gonna write that drops these URLs at that location uh, in my geometry. You're gonna see why we're gonna need that in a second. We're done here and create a little private func to drop URLs, which is an array of URL at a location, which is a CG point in geometry, which is a geometry proxy. And it returns a bool, which is whether it successfully drops. So I'm, I put it down here just because I don't like any of my bars, but especially my body to be have a bunch of junk in it. So I'm just putting this off and I was like, no other reason, don't have to do this. So what do I have to do here? I'm just gonna grab the first URL. So if, I'm gonna say if I can let URL equal the URLs first, the first thing in the array. So if, if I don't think this can happen, but if for some reason you got this drop thing and the array was empty, I don't wanna crash, but I'm not sure that's possible. I don't think drop destination would call your closure with an empty array. I don't know why it would ever do that, but I'm just being careful here that in case this array was empty, it shouldn't be. But I'm just gonna grab the first one in the array and use it as my background image, basically. So document, I call this intent function set background to that URL. And I'm gonna return true in that case. Otherwise, I'll return false. All right, let's try this. And here we are. Now, we're gonna learn a little bit about the iPad UI here. You can drag up from the bottom here to get to other apps and start other apps. The other thing you can do is look at these little three dots at the top. See that add another window? Ooh, add another window, yes sir. I'm gonna add this, it's Safari. So I got a Safari window there. So now I've got two windows on screen at the same time and now I can just drag and drop between them. So that's how you do this. To get this functionality, you need to turn on, on your iPad, a feature called Stage Manager. So if you go into your settings, there's somewhere there and somewhere, I'm not sure, either look for Stage Manager and turn it on, yeah. All right, so I've gone to a website here. Uh, it's just a search engine. I've searched countryside cartoon backgrounds, okay? Because that's my favorite kind of background, countryside cartoons. And there it is. And you can see actually the first one there, that's the one that I was showing you before. But we can pick up any of these and you just press and hold to pick it up and you can start dragging it around. You can drag it over into our app. Now, when we get over here, look what happened. Look at the little green plus. And this is telling you that if you drop it here, it's going to drop. But notice if I go down here, it's gone. Because this is a different view down here. This is my H stack, my scrolling view. It doesn't have, it's not a drop destination, but this is. So I get the plus green. So let's drop it. It's interesting that's not working. Uh, oh, okay. I know exactly what the problem is. This is a problem you'll often have happen to you. This is a really simple problem. This is actually a fundamental problem. There's nothing wrong with the code that we wrote to do that thing. The problem is the code that makes our MVVM work. Where is our at sign published? We never published any changes. So emoji art was changing. We set the background, it was working great, but we never actually published the changes. So it never caused our view to redraw. So the view never asked for it and the async image never redrew, redrew it. Okay, so there you go. Good, good learning lesson there. All right, so let's get our other window. Let's pick up something, this guy, drag it in here. See our nice green plus is okay. Let go. There it is. We got it. That's our background. Let's go grab something else. Let's try this one that we used in the other document over here. This one's big, so it took a second to load that one. But all the time that it was loading was not blocking our UI. All happening asynchronously over there. That's cool. So we got that drag and drop working. 
what about the drag and drop of our little emojis down here? We want to be able to pick these things up and drop them. So how do we do that? Well, there's two sides to that. We need to be able to pick them up and we need to be able to drop them. So we're going to have to do both sides. Well, the picking them up size, absolutely trivial. Go down here to the text. This is the text that are in our H stack, right? Our scrolling emojis here. And we're just going to say that this is draggable. And the transferable that you're going to drag when you pick this view up is, of course, the emoji string. And string is a transferable, so this works fine. But again, you could have your own transferables. You could transfer, and this could be URL. You give it whatever you want. Anything that is transferable can be draggable. You attach it to any view, and it'll pick that view up as you do it. And it, this works. In fact, that's all we need. If we go run, it's not going to drop, but it's going to drag. Pick up the turtle. See? Hmm. Picking up my turtle. Now, notice I don't have a green plus because I haven't, I only can drop URLs on my background. I can't drop strings, so I drop it, nothing happens, the turtle goes back. So we got the drag side easy. What about the drop side? Well, the drop side is a little trickier because we want to drop it in the same place. I want to do something like this. I want to go here and say drops string and go do a different drop thing here. But I can't have two of these drop destinations. I can only have one. And I also can't have like an array of different types right here. I can only have one type, one transferable. What's the solution? You got to create your own transferable that can be a string or a URL. So that's what I did. Let me show you that code here. It's called stroll data right here. Drag that in, put our Sterl data here at the bottom, copy it in. Let's take a look at Sterl data. So Sterl data, first of all, it's a transferable, so I'm importing core transferable. If you're doing the transferable protocol, you need core transferable. That's the module that does the transferable stuff. So what is my type here? It's called Sterl data, string URL data. It's just an enum that has three cases. This thing is a string, it's a URL, or it's data, right? Raw image data is what we're going to do eventually with that. We're not doing anything with data right now. And that's it. That's really all my enum is. You can see that it implements the transferable protocol because I want this thing to be transferable. But this thing could be either one of those three things. It's an enum, so it can only be one of the three things, but it can be either of those three things. Now, the only other code I have in here is a couple of inits that handle the case where one of the types actually is another type. For example, look at this one, a string that's actually a URL. So it's a string that actually starts with HTTP something something. That's really a URL. So I'm just being kind of tricky here and noticing, oh, someone is transferring a string, but it's got a URL in it. So I'm going to actually say it's a URL. And same thing up here, you've got a URL. There's, there's certain kind of URLs that have image data embedded in the URL not where the URL points to, but the actual URL itself, or like, like for thumbnail images, small images, whatever. So I'm just being a little tricky there, but you don't even have to pay any attention to those inits. We got that. Now, the question is, how do I make myself a transferable? Right? I want to be a transferable. Well, all three things in me are transferables, right? Strings, URLs, data. So I'm going to create myself as a transferable by proxy. And this is a really cool feature of transferables, which is that you can create a transfer representation for yourself that is a proxy of these other formats. And that's how you do it. You just say proxy representation of every other format that you want to proxy and then just provide one of yourself with that type. And now you can transfer yourself. So don't worry too much about this if you don't understand this, whatever. Just realize that I've created a new type called Stroll data, which can be a string, a URL, or a data. It's a single type. It's an enum. It could be any of those three things. Now I can drop that on my document. If I go back here, instead of dropping URLs, I'm going to drop a Stroll data on myself. So everywhere I say URL here, I'm going to say Stroll data. I'll copy and paste to make this easier. Copy, paste, paste, paste. Well, I'm not going to quite do this. So I'm just passing these around so instead of URLs, Stroll data instead of URLs. And this is instead of an array of URL, it's an array of Stroll data. Now, which of the things is it that actually got dropped? Well, I'm going to switch on myself to find out here. Switch on that Stroll data. And in the case 
that it's a URL, then I'm going to grab the little URL associated data. I'm going to do the same thing I just did. And in the case that it is a string, this is the emoji being dropped on me, then I'm going to ask my document to add this emoji. We'll do that in a second here. And otherwise, if it's that raw data type, raw data image, I'm just going to do nothing. Eventually, we will make it so that you can drag an image, not a URL to an image, but an actual image in, and we'll do that eventually, but we're not doing that yet. So I need to add an emoji. If you drop a string on me, I need to call my intent function add emoji. Remember that? So let's provide the arguments for that. And those arguments are the emoji I want to drop. That comes from my sterl data right here. That's the thing that was transferred, the transferable thing. And then I have a location. So what is my location? Well, it's location. That's the location that was handed off here. Unfortunately, that's a CG point. And when I add an emoji, I have to add it at an emoji dot position, right? Which is this coordinate system. So I'm gonna to have to do a conversion to a different coordinate system there. And then of course we also have the size. And I'm gonna, when I drag an emoji off the palette and drag it in there, I'm gonna drop it at the size that the emoji palette is. So I'll drop it the same size. In other words, it won't get smaller or bigger. So that is my palette emoji size, which is a CG float. But that's okay because our uh, view model converts it to an int for us, remember. So we have this problem right here where this is passing a CG point. So we're going to have to have a little function here. I'm going to call it emoji position at location. Let, let's put the function in first. Private func emoji position at a location. The co location is a CG point. Uh, in some geometry, we always need our geometry so that we can convert geometry proxy, and it's going to return an emoji art dot position. And this is the same kind of conversion we did before. I need the center of myself, so that's geometry dot frame in the local coordinate systems center. So I have my center. I'm just going to return an emoji dot position here. And the x value of this is an int, which is the location minus the center. And the y, again, we can't just say location dot y minus the center dot y because it's upside down. So well, instead, I'm going to say minus that right, to turn it right side back up again. So now I can go up here and say at the location in my geometry. A little complicated there unfortunately but it's just because it's different coordinate systems we had to do a little bit of conversion there and when we start zooming and panning in on Wednesday eh, we're gonna have to do even a little more here okay because when we drop the emojis into a zoomed or panned thing we have to figure out well where exactly did that emoji get dropped but uh, we're set up to do that here so what's it want here oh switch sterl data okay so let's go through all the sterl data so I'm gonna say sterl data in all of the sterl datas. And I'm just going to take the first one and return it. I told you that we can pick up multiple of them and drop them in, but I'm not actually going to do that, even though it kind of would make sense, but it would drop them all on top of each other, which is kind of weird. Why would you create an emoji art document where there's a whole bunch right at one spot? You'd know, probably just drag them in separately to their location. So I'm just going to take whatever the first one is and I'll return true when I find one. So I'm going through all my sterl datas and the first one I find that works, either it's a URL or it's a string, boom, I'm just going to use it. Either shut the background or drop the emoji. All right, let's see if it works. Right, let's get our background here real quick. When you drag, you got to let the other one come forward for it to drag. It won't drag while it's in the background. And then let's drag something. How about, what do we got here? We got a rocket ship. Let's put a rocket. So I'm going to pick up the rocket. Oh, got a plus. Plus is good. And drop. Ah, it works. You know, how about a car on the road right here? How about a airplane up in the sky? All right. We'll put a little house here. So that's all I really wanted to show you today. Get the drag and drop. Next time, we're going to work on 
zooming, pinching to zoom and panning around in this thing. And by doing that, I'm gonna show you how to use gestures. And then you, for your assignment, are gonna make it so you can pick the house up, make it bigger, you know, have a selection of multiple things, make them all bigger together, move them around together. That's what you're gonna be doing for your assignment five.